welcome to the Fairy Little Podcast. I'm Marcia, also known as Fairy Little, and this is my little podcast about knitting. A lot has happened in the last few weeks. Uh, Scylla has moved. She's gone to go do her PhD, which is super exciting for her, but I miss her ton. Um, summer has come to a close. It is now autumn, which I'm so excited about. I am, it's my favorite season. It's uh, my anniversary's coming up in a couple days here, and uh, yeah, it's actually tomorrow is my anniversary and my husband and I will have been married 13 years tomorrow and my birthday comes up in October. So a lot of really lovely things that I really like are coming up in the next little bit. So I'm super excited. Um, I always say I'm super excited, but I kind of, I'm just an excited person. <laughs> so I'm going to go into, uh, personal, personal stuff at the end. So um, just welcome if you're new and uh, welcome back if you're a returning viewer. It's great to have you here today. Um, I've changed my setup a little bit. I got a new desk to, I just shook the whole thing, to put my computer up on and to record from, which makes it easier so I'm not grabbing things from the ground. All of all of the everything that I will need today is right beside me or in front of me and I'm really excited that everything's so handy. Um, I have had a bout of cast-on-itis or cataclysmic casting on. <laughs> uh, I have, oh my goodness, I could have finished so many things by now if I just focused on one thing. But I just really want to knit everything and now I'm getting that feeling like I really need to finish something. So I feel like I might get something on that would be quick. Oh my goodness, it's a jumble of monkey monkey underpants up here. So, um, okay, so this weekend coming up is Knit City and I am over the moon. I am taking, I'm going to a lecture that Stephen West is going to be giving and then the next day I'm going to be taking uh, a color, um, playing with color class with Stephen West, which I'm very excited about. I just, I really wanna just play. <laughs> I've taken so many classes that are uh, focused on learning a, a specific skill, uh, sweater knitting, brioche knitting, um, designing. I've taken a lot of those kind of intensive courses in the last year and this one I feel like is just going to be a lot of fun and looking at how Stephen West uh, presents himself and his um, just his demeanor that he portrays on social media. Uh, I think that it's going to be a really good time. So I'm really looking forward to that. If you are going to Knit City, please, please, please come and talk to me. I would love to see you. And I also I have, have uh, pins. I have pins. I'll show you. I have these cute little fairy little pins. So if you come and say hi, then I'll give you a pin. <laughs> I've got a ton and I actually misplaced them so I just like tore my whole room apart looking for them and then I found them and uh, all is well. <laughs> so I was like, I do not have enough time to order more pins. Um, so that is coming up. I'm so excited. It's really, it's perfect timing. I just, I'm so excited to go down to Vancouver and see all my nitty friends and my old and new friends that I haven't made yet. And it's always such a great time. So many laughs, so, so much food. <laughs> and I'm really, really excited about it. Um, I can't, I don't know if you could tell, but this is like <laughs> awesome. Also coming up in October is um, Rhinebeck, which I'm very excited about. I have to travel all the way across Canada and down. And so I will be going from coast to coast for this epic adventure. So this is what I'm thinking. Um, I'm going to be taking you along with me to Knit City, absolutely. I'm gonna do uh, some footage, maybe a couple interviews, maybe catch up with my friends, Tracy and Jody, the grocery girls, and uh, uh, if they're not too busy, maybe ask them a few questions on camera for you guys. And um, yeah, and I'll see if I can snag some other podcasters and, and have a couple minutes with, with each of them. Maybe I'll just have a couple questions to ask each of them, same questions to see what their answers are, uh, as well as, um, so I'm going to, 
I don't know if I'm going to do it a vlog style or if I'm going to just record it and do it as, as a podcast. So this is what I'm thinking. Um, October is Vlogtober and I've never ever taken part in it. But October is, is a big month. Um, and I'm thinking that I will vlog Knit City and that will go straight into October, which is Vlogtober. And I'm hoping to participate in Vlogtober. So throughout October, I don't think I'll have a regular podcast, but I will try and vlog every day, which seems a little intense, but I can do it. I'm sure I can. <laughs> And so I'll start off with Knit City and then roll right into Vlogtober. And uh, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's a new challenge. And um, I have started a new job. That means that I, uh, I work all night long and I sleep during the day. So we'll see how that works out. I might miss a day or two here and there, but we will. I will try to, to do one every day. Um, now that I said it here, I'm so intimidated, but it'll be good, right? It'll be good it'll be good. <laughs> so uh, there's two little pieces of administration that I need to get done first. And um, what I need to do is I'm doing two draws. Um, one is for the Sorrento Knit Along that we just finished. And that uh, there's a thread in the Ravelry group and I closed it late. Um, which is fine. I wanted to include as many people as possible and, and I was thinking the 15th, but it's mid-September, it's almost the end, but that's okay. If you, uh, if you needed a couple extra days, there's a couple extra days there for that. And so, um, I'm going to grab the prize. So the... The Sorrento shawl knit along uh, is the Sorrento shawl which I designed and I don't have it up here right now. Um, but it is a beautiful three skein shawl that has short rows and it's got beautiful three sections of beautiful, beautiful intuitive lace. So it is, if you're new to lace, this is a pattern that you could sink your teeth into. And as always, 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 if you have any questions, I am definitely open to helping you out. Um, the best place to get a hold of me as far as asking me questions about the pattern or if you need any help with anything is to go onto Instagram. That is where I am mostly and private message me through Instagram. I, uh, I am on Ravelry, but it's not as frequent as Instagram because Instagram is so easy to get to and, and navigate. So, um, so if you do want to knit it and you haven't knit it yet and you have any sort of questions or comments or queries, you can get a hold of me and I'm totally open to helping you out with that. I, I would hate to see anybody struggling with one of my designs, which uh, everybody who's knit it has said that they enjoy it, they get the most compliments out of it, and and so I love hearing those things as well. So um, yeah, you can drop me a line over on Instagram, <laughs> and I'm very little over there. But this is the grand prize for the Sorrento Shawl Knit Along. Doo, doo, doo. It is a fairy bag. Isn't that beautiful? Because I'm very little. And it is by Monique of Frog Peak Creations. She's a friend of mine and we've gone to uh, the Sorrento retreat together a few times. And she is just lovely. She is, she is so much fun and she donated this to as the prize. But that's not all. This thing is cram packed with loveliness. Okay. When I was in New Denver, uh, I was speaking with Kathy who runs Fiberphilia and she owns uh, so much more yarn in New Denver and she offered up a prize of this beautiful hedgehog fiber yarn. It is gorgeous and it's in the crybaby colorway, <laughs> which is so much fun. And it's got these amazing different colored speckles in it and it's got green and pink and, and it just went really well, I felt like, with the bag. So I was very thankful for that. Thank you so much, Kathy and Monique. And uh, as well as, so that's part of the prize, but that's not all. I also have included Elizabeth Zimmerman, Zimmerman's Knitter's Almanac. And this is a fantastic book. 
I enjoy this book so much and it smells so good. I, I always smell stuff. I don't know why. And also there's these chow goo needles and they're 5.5 millimeter. So they're good for doing some lace work and they're the, they're the red, red wire. <laughs> <laughs> and they're great for doing lace work or, or what have you. It's one of the sizes that I use a lot. So I just threw a brand new pair of those in there for you. And also have these beautiful stitch markers that I got from our local yarn store by Two Sticks and You. And it has this beautiful little maple leaf on it and then these little just ring markers to go with it. So that's included in there as well. And... They are on Etsy and also I have this other stitch marker and this is from Yurtin Rackies <laughs> and also on Etsy that is there we go here's her information do, do, do. and she sent this for a giveaway and it is this beautiful fortune cookie, Tiffany's inspired fortune cookie that she sent for me to do as a giveaway. And she sent this some time ago. I ordered some stitch markers a while ago and she'd sent these and uh, and it's got this beautiful little jewel attached to it too. So it's, it's this cute little, um, it's a progress keeper. So you just attach it to your knitting to see how far you've gone or you can use it as a stitch marker. It's got the lobster claw. So that is all included in this amazing bumper prize. And I'm so excited that I get to give this to one of you. So without further ado, the winner of this beautiful prize is, is Cindy Vaudry, who is the post number 23. Thank you so much, Cindy, for finishing your shawl. And this is going to come to you. So I need you to co uh, contact me. You can either send me your address through Instagram or through Ravelry, and I will be sending this out in the mail to you. If you want to go through and look at all of the finished Sorrento shawls that are in the finished objects thread on the Ravelry group as well, go take a look. They're stunning. They're stunning, stunning, stunning. And I gave a little bit extra time in both of those threads before I closed them because I know the Sorrento is a large shawl and, uh, and I wanted to give everyone as much opportunity to enter as I could. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, everybody. Just over a month ago, we reached... 4,000 subscribers, which is awesome. I'm so excited about that. We're we're well over that now, which is fantastic. And thank you all so very much. It's it's just amazing to me that, that you guys keep coming back to see what I'm knitting. And so um, I am giving away this beautiful skein of yarn and it's, uh, it's Haidu Designs. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, in the Sienna colorway. And it's just this amazing yarn with all of these different speckles and colors in it. It's so, so pretty. And I was giving away this yarn, but I decided that I would also throw in one of my bags that I've made. And it's Asian inspired fabric. And uh, it is, uh, you could fit probably a pair of socks in here or you could fit... Um, uh, a small shawl, some mittens, that sort of thing. It's a smaller project bag. It fits a skein of yarn very easily. Uh, so it's a one skein project bag. Um, and this is what the inside looks like. It's Asian inspired writing. And there's a little chicken notebook in here because chickens are awesome. And this one has lines. And there's a couple other little goodies in here. And some tea and that sort of thing. So this beautiful prize, and it also has a progress keeper on the, an Asian inspired progress keeper on the zipper. So you can take that off and use it or you can just use it as a zipper pull. Either way, it's up to you. And I made that as well. 
Um, so this beautiful prize as a thank you for the 4,000 subscribers is going to post number 106 and it's McDonald CJ who is Christine. So congratulations Christine. You are going to have this coming your way. I just need you to contact me with your contact information on Ravelry or Instagram and I will mail that out to you as soon as I can. So congratulations. I am so happy about those prizes. It's just amazing, amazing, amazing. I wanted so, to mention all of the amazing posts for the 4,000 subscriber giveaway. The prompt was what I love about autumn. And so many of them are the changing colors, the drinks, the working on larger projects, the knitting, the cozying down with a good book by the fireplace. It's just oh, <laughs> everything I love so much. I am so glad I have that in common with so many of you because it was just, it's so nice to read through and it's just, it's really calming actually to, to read through it. It just, oh, <laughs> it's just so nice. So yeah, so that, if you want to take a look and, and read through that, it's amazing. So I want to start a new knit along and I want to call it the mindless knit along because we are coming into, uh, festival season, knitting season. So there's going to be a lot of people who are traveling, who are going to be sitting down and visiting with people and doing some knitting, but not necessarily wanting to work on something that is uh, in depth or complicated because with all the chatting and visiting going on, then uh, just a simple knit is usually what I go to. So, um, so this is called the mindless knit along, hashtag mindless knit along. If you're on social, if you're on social media, it's hashtag my and listen it along. And I have had a prize donated to me for this knit along specifically. It is from Allison Barnes Yarn, and it is their basic sock in the Jazzer size colorway. Oh my goodness, can you even? This yarn is stunning. That pink is not coming out as vibrant as it is. It is amazing and there's black speckles and yellow, oh, and it is so soft. It smells good. <laughs> I really love this yarn. When I opened it, I just, it took my breath away because it's so pretty and I just think it's amazing. So this is going to be the prize for the Mindless Knit Along, which will start today. I'll start it today and uh, it will go till till mid-November. Let's go till mid-November and uh, and there will be a thread open in the Ravelry group. All you have to do is post your mindless knit. It doesn't have to be complete. It doesn't have to, um, you don't have had to have started it today. Uh, you can pick something that you're already working on, a pair of socks, a scarf, a hat, um, a sweater, a simple sweater that doesn't, you know, require a lot of thinking and that you can work on in a group or or shawl or that sort of thing any anything you just anything can work so um and it doesn't have to be finished by november 15th that's just the close date where i'm going to draw a name um and the thread will be it'll be a chatter thread as well as the um photo thread so i will draw prizes from there but the only um entries in that thread that will be eligible will be the ones with the photos attached. So any comments that people are making, those won't be entered in to win the prize, but anyone with a photo, those will be entered. So uh, if you have are working on a couple different things, you can throw both of those in there. Um, as many entries as you want, it's wide open. It's a mindless knit, something simple, something fun. I just want to see tons of knit projects in there and I want to give away this yarn. So you can go in there, the link will be below, and you can go and take a picture of your knitting and throw it in there and yeah, and then you get an opportunity to win this yarn. So I'm super, super excited about that. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Allison, for this beautiful, beautiful prize. I am so happy that I have the opportunity to, uh, to give this away. And uh, she is available on um, AllisonBarnesYarn.com is what is on here. I think I went through Etsy, which is AllisonBarnesYarn.etsy.com. 
okay? So you can get it through Etsy as well if you're interested in, in getting some of this beautiful, beautiful yarn. I'm super excited about this. I wish I was going to knit with it, but I have some amazing things to show you guys after because there have been some enhancements to my stash and I'm not going to lie, there's some Allison Barnes yarn in there and I'm so excited about this. So um, we're going to get into the knitting now, which has taken us 30 minutes to get to, but um, and I apologize if uh, you're here just for the knitting and weren't interested in any of that but I have a ton of knitting going on here. So I'm gonna start off with the Kalalach Capris that I'm working on. I cast these on August 25th and I, they're by Andrea Wrangle Knits and this is on Ravelry. So you can find it on Ravelry. They're cool leggings and they have um, really cool cables uh, and so I started knitting these and they have really, really cool um, short rows in them which for the waistband. So as you start at the waistband and it's a flipped waistband. So you knit the, t the, the back of the waistband and then you knit the front of the waistband and you fold it over and there's there's the top where you fold it over and you put a piece of elastic in it, which I have this elastic. It's about one inch and she explains really well how to do it. But I, I put off the adding the elastic in because I just put it down. I'm like, oh, it needs me to do something else I needed to sew. So I had to get my machine out, that sort of thing. So last night I added the elastic and I knit the two sides together, which she explains very well how to do. Um, my short rows I did a little bit differently than she explains how to do them. She does a yarn over um, short row and I just did a German short row. So um, with a German short row you just flip the yarn over your needle and pull it tight and then turn it over and start start knitting. Like you slip that stitch, pull it over. Um, there's some really good videos on YouTube as to how to do that. And I might do one myself to throw in there, but it, it makes it so that when you're doing a short row, you can't see, like it gives a little bit of a blip where, where that changes, but it doesn't leave a hole or anything. So I, it's my prefer, preferred way to do a short row. I even do my heels and socks with that short row. So this is how far I am on this now. So I have the waistband done and I'm just going to be starting the cables now. So the cables go down each side of the leg and then the front and the bum is just knit straight. Um, and this one, this stitch marker here is the center back, which is the, the beginning of, of my row. So it goes like that actually. And my uh, elastic is already in there and it's closed off. So now that elastic is in there forever because <laughs> it's knit right into it. So this is a really nice knit and I'm enjoying it a, a lot. It's uh, it's really good. I am using, what needles am I using? I am using Chow Goo's. Um, and these ones are, so I had to go down a needle size for the Chow Goo's to get gauge. Um, and I, I had to go down a needle size because I'm, I'm fairly loose knitter. So I just went down and down and down until I got to the right, to the right gauge. And so these are 3.75s um, millimeter and what is that? It's a five US. So I just went down a needle size to get, to get gauge and to make sure that my fabric was dense enough that uh, it won't, stretch a crazy amount for you to see through them because they're their pants so I just I don't know if they will but we'll we'll see how how this yarn blooms and and if it fills in the gaps essentially and this is my first time knitting with this yarn it's Lorna's laces and I got this from an online shop I, I can't remember which which shop it was I wasn't like a specific independent. So um, it was just, it might have, yeah, I just Googled Lorna's laces and, and purchased it from from the shop that, that came up. So I think it was a Canadian shop too. 
Uh, and so each skein has, um, it's 100% superwash merino wool with 200 yards in each skein. So it's kind of, it's about a sport weight. So it's, it's fairly, it's fairly light, um, I want to say, but it's really nice to knit with. It's very soft um, and it's 100% super wash. So there's, there's um, nothing in it, like there's no nylon to give it strength or anything. So that lends itself more to uh, a tire than to things like socks and that sort of thing. So I have quite a few skeins of this that I am working with that will go into this. I was hoping to have this done by Knit City, but it's Sunday today and Knit City starts next Friday. And so I probably am thinking I will not have it done, especially considering how um, how all over the place my knitting has been. I ca I've cast on so many things. So yeah, so that is coming along and I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Um, and so I would definitely recommend if you are looking for something different to knit, these are pretty cool. They're pretty fantastic. And I don't know anybody who has knitted pants personally. So, uh, so there we are. The next thing that I have been knitting is, <laughs> I'm looking around because there's so many things. So I was online and looking at this yarn and I have been looking at this yarn, I am not going to lie, I've been looking at this yarn for months, for months. And it is by the yarn therapist who is Jennifer Thiel and she is so, lovely to deal with. Um, so the yarn that I got is 80% um, superwash merino, 10% uh, cashmere, and 10% nylon. So, so soft, you guys. It's amazing. And this yarn, this cake was originally bigger than my head. There's about, uh, I think it's 1,600 yards in here. Or... Um, Okay, it's 300 grams, which is 1,200 meters, which is about 1,300 yards. So not 16, about 13, 13, yes. So uh, this yarn is to make the Doctor Who scarf. And I have been knitting this like crazy. And also I got extra yarn for the tassels on the bottom and she sent me a link to a pattern to talk of that shows um, essentially what it should look like and to give an idea for a stitch count. I am using high high sharps in the 3.5 millimeter US 4 size and I started knitting it and I got to about here and I ripped it all out and I started again and the reason I did that was because when you change color, so this is all one color, there's no ends to weave in, that is a bonus to this yarn, but when it changes colors, and it was fairly evenly, um, my gauge came out fairly close, like it was within a couple of stitches, but it would have um, a line like this on what I would consider the right side every once in a while. So what I did is I ripped it back, and I, when I came to the color changes, you can see here, I knit a row and then I purled a row and then I knit a row. And so each of these colors is just straighten it, straighten it, and then you get to where the color's changing, knit a row, purl a row, knit a row. And the transitions are just really smooth that way and it also gives a really cool texture in between the colors. So I'm really happy with that. Every once in a while I would not realize where I was in the yarn and I'd have to like tink back a row. Not a big deal, there's only like 66 stitches or something here, which is super easy to work on. Yeah, and it's all just knit. And this scarf is going to be, I think 10 to 12 feet long. And it's inspired by Doctor Who from the 70s. I think it was the um, Baker. I think that's that's the one, and uh, 1978, I do believe he was the, the doctor, and he had the big, massive scarf that's like wound around his head like 14 times, and see, it's not, it's not quite that long yet. <laughs> but it's a really 
really meditative knit. It's just so relaxing. I can watch shows when I'm knitting. I can sit at the swimming pool while the girls are having their lessons. And I'm just really, really enjoying this yarn. So if you are a fan of Doctor Who, definitely go and take a look at her yarn. She has, um, this is fingering weight, but she also has worsted weight as well. So you could do a worsted weight one if you are interested. Um, and this yarn is so soft. The cashmere content, because there's cashmere in it, it just adds that extra ugh, scrunchy factor. And her other yarns are brilliant. They are so beautiful. I think if you went over there onto her Etsy shop, you would not be disappointed. She custom dyed this for me. So these ones are dyed to order um, and it came fairly quickly. Like I didn't have to wait very long at all for it. Um, and she communicated back and forth with me about it and like about what I was looking for and like the tassels and what, what I'd like that to be like. And because you can get it added to your skein or you can get it separate or, or whatever, or if you don't want tassels, I mean, don't have it. But uh, yeah, my experience with her was amazing. Uh, and um, so I just, I cannot recommend this yarn enough. It is so fun. I'm so glad I don't have ends to weave in. And also I slipped the first stitch of every row to give it a nice clean edge. So that's on both sides. Slip that stitch purl wise with the yarn in front and then off we go, off to the races. So yes, so if you are looking for yarn for Doctor Who scarf, I definitely recommend her yarn, the yarn therapist. And she, I do believe she is dying up some extras in her shop, so she probably has some already waiting in her shop. So if you're interested, um, I would suggest you go over there right away before somebody else snags it up and you can be knitting on it super fast and you could join me in a mindless knit. So that's that. The next thing I'm working on involves, I redid my bedroom and I changed my color scheme. It's very much white and gray and it is very clean. I moved our room entirely and did a big renovation job while while Nick was away and repainted everything and bought some new sheets. We purchased a new bed together and I refinished all of our our bedroom furniture so it's all white and I changed the knobs so they're they're like really cool and they have sparkles in them so they're very feminine but um, Nick doesn't care about stuff like that. It just looks really good. So I picked up this Bernat Roving yarn from our local Walmart <laughs> and it is 80% acrylic and 20% wool and it's hand wash dry flat. Um, I wanted something that would be a little bit easier care so I wanted something that did have acrylic content in it because this is a blanket for our bed so it will be washed um, fairly regularly and I started so I'm holding the yarn double. This is it. <laughs> and I'm holding the yarn double and I'm using high, high sharps and they are 15 us 10 millimeter um, size. And these are my um, interchangeables part of my interchangeable set. Um, I really like the joins on these. They're very, they're very nice. Um, I have the short tips. Uh, next time I might go with a little bit of a longer tip just because the, the transition is fairly quick. It goes up super fast and then down super fast. So I might go with a longer needle just so that transition period there is a little bit longer, but that's, it's not a complaint. It's just, I might want to try that next time. So I'm holding the yarn double and I'm actually doing brioche stitch. So it's taking me twice as long as a regular rib because I have to work each row um, back and forth to get one, one row done. But the cool thing with doing brioche flat like this in one color is you never have to purl, ever, ever. <laughs> I am not purling at all in this. It's all just knit stitches which is super cool because on the way 
on the way this way, you're knitting all of these, where's the ones with the yarn overs? No, oh, here, let's go this way, because this is the direction I'm going. So you knit all of these stitches with their little shawl or yarn over, and then you're slipping the purl stitch, and you're knitting the knit stitch with its yarn over, and then you're slipping the purl stitch, which, how easy is that? So one thing though, so I'm enjoying this and it's going along very nicely. And as I was working on this, I was like, I should cast on a pair of socks. So I did. And every time I was going to knit the rib, I kept brioching because <laughs> the, the rhythm is just so easy to get into. And so I kept brioching. And so I kept having to tink back because my socks were having a brioche rib, which is fine, but that's not what I was going for. So I had to keep tinking it back. But this is coming along and it's knitting up very, very quickly. This has already, it has two full skeins in it and I've already added um, my second set so that's where where the first two ended and then this is just going on so um, and I have quite a few I should end up with a blanket that's just kind of a foot a foot of the bed blanket just to go across the bottom or just be a throw or just a small small blanket I don't have exact plans for <laughs> I don't have exact plans for what that's going to look like but I'm enjoying it and it's brioche and so it's just a lot of it's a lot of fun I'm knitting needles everywhere I need to sort through that so you may be wondering where my opal socks are that I was going to add heels into and separate so this is one long tube it's an afterthought everything sock I still haven't gotten to the rest of it so I just wanted to update you on that that this is still here still looking like this and still needs to be done. So maybe I'll finish those this week as well so I can have something else off the needles, but I need to do the heels and the toes for these. So that is still there. I just wanted to give you an update in case you were wondering whatever happened to those. And so I have some other projects that I have been working on, of course. So I have a friend whose birthday just recently passed and I have been knitting socks for each of my friends. So I had a, a bunch of my friends over one night and um, we were just hanging out and having a glass of wine and I invited everybody down into my knitting room and I had this brainchild to tell them each to pick a skein of yarn and I would knit them a pair of socks. So I've been going through that for the last, well, since I think it was December, January when I had everybody do that. So I've been knitting through them for their birthday. So my friend Sarah uh, picked this beautiful yarn that is by Isis Fiber Arts. And I'm doing an afterthought heel. And this is um, Heritage, uh, Cascade Heritage Silk yarn the black and so I'm doing an afterthought heel so I have my line in there for the heel and then I just pick up those stitches and take out that yarn and then just essentially it's knitting a toe on the heel but I do a few extra rows around to just give it some more depth so it really hugs your heel so I have one done up to where I need to add the heel and I started the other one last night, so I've been working on the rib. These are the ones that I kept trying to brioche. So um, my stitch count is 64 stitches. That's my regular stitch count. And then um, it's a one by one rib, which is what I normally do. And it is knit on two millimeter needles, which, and these are high, high sharps and two millimeter needles, which is a US zero. So I'm knitting them on zeros and it's the size I have to knit because of how loose I knit and, and then I get perfect gauge. So I'm very happy with that. Started my second sock and I'm going to have quite a bit of yarn left. Um, Isis Fiber Arts yarn is very plump and her colors are very, very bright and they're they're so um the color is so saturated like it's 
they're just really, it's really nice yarn to knit with. It's very soft um, and it's got a really nice twist to it, which gives it um, like more bounce, more stretch and which I really enjoy. So this is Isis Fiber Arts yarn and it is, I think it's the poinsettia color way is what it is. I'm just going to say it is. No, I don't think it is. <laughs> I can't remember what color it is um, and I lost my tag so if I think of it I will put it below if not I apologize and just check out her website she's she has it posted it's one of her regular colors so you'll be able to find it there and it's just in my bag that I made when I was first starting making knitting bags and it's Asian inspired and that's the it's the back it was a one of those cool panels um, and another thing I've cast on. See, I have so many things cast on. It's incredible. Is these socks. They are, I'm knitting them two at a time. And they're on two millimeter needles. And these are, ooh, what are they? I want to say knit pro but I'm not quite sure um, I haven't knit with with these needles before but I am I am enjoying them I'll, I'll see if I can find their container um, so I'm knitting these socks and they're two at a time they're top-down socks and they are being knit in the <laughs> don't have the tag for this one either. Wow, Marsha, seriously. I'm sorry, guys. I will, uh, I think I have it on my Instagram, so I'll take, I'll take a peek there, and then I'll put it down below if I can find it for you guys, because this yarn is awesome. It is so soft and so lovely to knit with. I love this. The black in between colors, that is my jam. I have always loved, like, black and pink and black and blue and black and purple like just that definition with the black in it just ooh, I love it so I'm doing a heel flap here's my heel flap that I started here and um, yeah it's coming along and uh, I'm only a couple rows into the heel flap and I just have to find my my book because I'm using the heel from the Laura Neal book uh, sock architecture and it's the stree sock because that I enjoy that heel a lot so um, I just had to pull that out and and use that pattern because that's the one I use and this bag I got at Knit City last year and it I got it from um, her name's Nekazuki Knits and she has a knitting podcast and this is the wee box bag in the Japanese fabric which is super cute so the fabric is a Japanese fabric, but it's covered in sheep. And it's a bit of a, it's a heavier fabric, which is really cool. It's not, it doesn't have any heavy lining or anything in it. It might have a, a light lining, but yeah. Yeah, I think it's got maybe a light lining, but it's not anything heavy. So it's all scrunchy and lovely. So that is that. So moving into finished objects so something that is coming up and I can I'm going to talk about it and <laughs> I'm wearing it is this beautiful Skaha sweater this is my first sweater design and my test knitters have been amazing they are working away at it some of them have already completed it thank you so much ladies you have done an amazing job and I'm so so happy with with how much communication we've had and how hard you guys have been working on getting this done I know a sweater projects a big project and um, I just wanted to let you guys know that it will not be released in mid-October. It's going to be released next weekend. So um, 
by the 1st of October, it will be released. It may be released um, a little bit earlier. And I'll be at Knit City during that time, so I'm not sure if it will be released right before I go on the 29th or the 28th of September or the 1st of October. So just keep your eyes peeled. Um, as soon as it's available, I will put the link below so you'll be able to get a hold of it. Um, it's going to be at the same price point as every single one of my other patterns, which is, four, well, not everyone. Some are a little bit lower, but $4 is what it's going to be Canadian. So that makes it, I don't know, like $3.50 American and like $2 European, something like that, or two euro or something. So it's not going to be expensive. This pattern I have put the most work into out of any pattern. It goes from size 32 chest all the way up to size 50. It is a unisex um, sweater, so it is uh, made for a man or a woman. There is waist shaping, should you want it or not. You can um, you can put it in there or not. Uh, the one I knit for Nick uh, has waist shaping. This is his over here, and mine does not have waist shaping. So I knit mine actually a, a size larger than I needed because I wanted four inches of ease and extra sleeve length. And uh, instead of the two that are included in, within the pattern. So I just went up a size and made this nice cozy sweater that fits wonderfully. And it's just, it's very comfortable and I love it. And I'm going to, uh, insert a little video here introducing the Skaha sweater. kind of had fun making that video. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. So I just want to say thank you all in advance for all of your support. Uh, my Sorrento shawl did so well. And I just, I put so much time into designing this this sweater, the Skaha sweater by Marsha Ibuki. And you can get it on Ravelry. And I put so much time into it and so much energy and it is definitely a labor of love. I love this sweater. I'm just looking at it. It has, so I'm going to go over some of the details a little bit. It has wider decreases. So it's a bottom up and it's one piece. Um, the pattern goes all the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom. There we go. I'm just pulling it the wrong way because I'm looking at the camera. So it goes all the way to the bottom and each size, as the sizes get larger, the panel gets gets larger. So it's not shrinking on your chest for the larger sizes. The panel should stay um, uh, in proportion to your body. So so this is from the, the side view and it does have, I do have quite a, a bit of ease in it. There should be, there's like four or five inches of ease in here which, and it has no waist shaping on this one. That one has waist shaping, but I just love it so much. It's a nice snuggle down and read a book or do some knitting while you're watching a movie or whatever kind of sweater. And on the back, it's just straight knit. So that's, you can get some speed in there with uh, the straight knit. It's a very easy pattern to follow. The design is knit with knits, and is done with knits and pearls. And it does have a chart for for the panel across the front, and it um, it has some photos that have like a bit of a schematic on there so that you can see the the measurements. And it is it is a very simple sweater to um, alter or change. If you wanted this panel on the back, you could do that as well. It would be very easy to insert that into the back as well. Um, and the decreases are 
raglan decreases and they come up to the top and it just has such a nice clean edge so you knit up to the underarms and then you put um, it on waist yarn or you can leave it on the needles and grab another pair of needles and then you cast on the sleeves and then you attach the sleeves and then you just continue and there's some decreasing in the underarms before you even get to attaching the sleeves just because or as you're attaching the sleeves there's decreases because I didn't want um, all of the extra fabric that some patterns have around the arms I didn't I, I didn't want that I wanted it to be a nice smooth line through through your underarm area so it's got that cool detail that goes right underneath and it uses up it just cleans up all of that extra fabric that uh, that some some bottom-up sweaters can have and it just just brings it in so nicely and you just bring it in over the over the pattern I'll show you here comes in over the pattern and because the it comes in over the pattern and the raglan <laughs> my, my hands are going in different directions um, because the raglan comes up the way it does it actually brings attention up to your face because it's like the raglan is like pointing to your face so it draws attention up instead of instead of down um, and I did the longer sleeves because I wanted longer sleeves for snuggling down in but you don't have to do that of course I did knit the larger size so um, I knit this in Barocco vintage I also knit that one in Barocco vintage I wanted to make sure that um, that if it accidentally got into the washing machine because sometimes my husband doesn't sort that it wouldn't be destroyed. So mostly my knits go in a separate spot to be washed and I hand wash them. Every once in a while something gets mixed up in the rest of the laundry and if this accidentally ended up going through the washing machine, it would be okay. It would be fine. So that's that was where my thinking was for that. Um, he's worn this um, since I blocked it so he's and he really loves it so um, so I knit his for him and I gave it to him and he loves it so much and then he came into my studio and he saw mine <laughs> blocking and he comes out and he said to me he's like tell me you did not match yourself and uh, not knit yourself a matching sweater to mine and I said do you want the truth or do you want me to tell you that I didn't knit a matching sweater to yours? <laughs> and then he laughed and I was like, we have matching sweaters. Aren't you happy? <laughs> it was pretty funny. So yeah, so this is going to be available um, probably before October 1st, but October 1st for sure. Um, so if you want to wait till the first to go check that out, then absolutely. Um, and I'm really excited about it, it going out into the world. Uh, the measurements are going to include uh, inches and centimeters. That was uh, one, one comment my testers made that would be an excellent addition. So I'm very excited about that. That will be added in and before it goes live. And so awesome. So on to stash acquisitions. There are a couple. Along with my Doctor Who yarn that has come in. I just remembered something else. I'm going to add it into the uh, the giveaway. <laughs> um, along with my Doctor Who yarn, which was a new, new acquisition, um, I ordered this yarn from Allison Barnes Yarn. It's her spring flower collection. I know it's autumn, but I saw this on her Instagram and I had to go and have it because it is so pretty. Look at those colors. And it's all mini, mini skeins or smaller skeins. I think they're 20 grams each. Yep. Six 20 gram mini skeins and they each have 74 yards, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon 
and they are so pretty. I love these speckles and they are going to go into a beautiful project. I'm just going to open it. Take out these two. Look at those. They're so, so pretty and they're so soft. And they smell so good. They're so beautiful. And I just, this is the first time I've touched them. <laughs> I left them closed up until, until I just opened them now. And it's so pretty. Like I love the green that, that she's put in here. Like it's just such a pretty, like that pink and that green together is just, it's a wow. And then there's some speckles and this blue one. So, so pretty. So she released those. Um, a couple weeks ago and they came in and I cannot wait to knit with them so that is going to be happening I don't know when they'll need a special project I feel like so I'm super excited about those and again she is on Etsy I received this beautiful gift from Lavender Mountain Yarns and she sent me these beautiful 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. It's 462 yards for 100 grams. It's fingering weight yarn. And this one is in the um, Banks Channel colorway. And it has green and blue speckles and a little bit of cream in there. I'm just feeling these kind of colors lately. They're just so, so pretty. And she just totally blessed me with these. And I'm going to use them in a design. So I'm very excited that these are going to be going into something that's new. And I've been percolating over them since, since they came in what I'm going to design with them. Very excited. She is um, LavenderMountainYarns.com and she's got some very beautiful, amazing colors and this yarn is so soft. It's so pretty and it smells so yummy. I just love the smell of yarn. I just... <laughs> I know you do too. You're a yarn sniffer. <laughs> this yarn is so beautiful and she said oh, thank you so much it's so beautiful so go and get some so pretty one of my lovely test knitters is not only an amazing knitter but she also creates bags and she sent me one that I just loved and she had it on her Instagram her name is Krista and she also has Longview Creations and I don't know if you can see why she would send me this beautiful bag and why I would love it so much. This is an amazing gift. Thank you so much, Krista. And also, thank you so much for test knitting for me. It's been amazing. It's this cute little bag and it has this box bottom, which may, means it can stand up on its own. And it's a light line, so it will scrunch into your bag perfectly. I'm so excited about this. I love <laughs> vintage camper bags. like. I want to dress in it, like seriously. It's such great fabric and I love this green down here. She's on Etsy and her Etsy shop is www.etsy.com forward slash CA forward slash shop forward slash Longview Creations. So if you're interested in any of her bags, you can go and get one there. And now that I've shown this, I can use it. So I'm going to be using it when I go to Knit City. I'm super excited about that. But she didn't just send me a bag. She sent one for you guys as well. I'm going to add this into the giveaway for the Mindless Knit Along. And it is going to go with that beautiful yarn. I'm going to put them together. But she sent this amazing bag and it is nice and big. You could put a large shawl in it. You could... It's got this beautiful liner. And again, it's the box bottom. So it can stand up on its own and it's got these beautiful leaves and this fabric is just oh I just love it it's like um feels almost like a linen and her beautiful zipper and her zipper pull is this beautiful um, knitting needles and yarn look at that 
I don't have any tattoos, but if I had a tattoo, it might look like that stitch marker. That would be what I brought in for my inspiration. Look at how the yarn just winds around that ball. It's fabulous. I love it. And then there's the little bit of yarn hanging off right there. And so it could be a progress keeper as well as a zipper pull. You could choose whatever you want to do with it. So amazing. This is, and it's got a cool little thing to like attach or hold on to. And so I'm going to put that yarn from Allison Barnes yarn in here. And that is going to be part of the giveaway for the mindless knit along. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Krista. It is beautiful. And thank you, Allison. This is going to be a great prize package and I cannot wait to draw for that one. So thank you so much. So the time has come for some personal jibber jabber. So if you were just here for the announcements and the knitting, thank you so much for coming. And if you're ready to dive into my real life, here we go. Scylla moved. We packed up the truck and we took her down and she is gone. She is doing her PhD in psychology, which is amazing. She's going to be taking a trip to Germany next week with uh with her program and they're meeting with some people there which is fantastic she's already stressed out like crazy which i love and she loves so it's all good <laughs> and uh, yeah she's well on her way so so uh we took her down and we spent a day there we drove down one day spent a day and then came home the next day and i brought the girls and we just had an amazing time um and we we went and did a lot of things we went to the beach there's a castle in Victoria that we took a little tour of and we went to um, the yarn store, of course. We went to two different yarn stores, which was fantastic. And we also, uh, we at the beach we went to, there was a piano set up there. And so a lot of people were up at the piano playing chopsticks. And I play the piano very ill. Like I play by ear but there's a couple like I have a couple party tricks that I can pull out and and so after everybody else was done uh playing I went I went up and and started doing my couple songs that I know and uh and this couple walked up and they were standing behind me and I've never like I, I've never played for people I just play for myself kind of thing and and this cute couple they're like arms around each other going like this and I'm hitting all of the wrong notes so I'm just like this piano's outside so it's not totally in tune some of the keys stick and they were just like oh it's so nice <laughs> and and I almost like I did I felt embarrassed because I just play so poorly and they're just like enjoying it so much so I was like oh I just I don't know what to do now because I only have two songs, so that's it. And uh, and when I was done, the couple's like, can we get our picture taken with you? Which is so cute. But I'm like, I'm horrible at this. Like, it was so funny. And, and they were just super adorable. So we went down to the ocean and the kids saw some jellyfish. And uh, we went for quite a few, like, little walks. We went on... Um, uh, like a ocean taxi it's like a between two different points uh, we had some amazing food food in Vancouver is just so lovely and we helped Scylla do some unpacking and then we headed back and and we had we always have fun on the ferry which which was good um, and we headed back and that was a lot of fun the girls already miss Auntie Scylla but um, but I have a feeling she'll be back <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so a school started for the kids and that was a big rigmarole while uh, while they were starting school. My husband was over in China and then Japan and then home. So I was doing the single parenting thing, doing all of that. And then when he got home, I worked like crazy so that I could get extra hours in. And then he's leaving again. So it makes it kind of difficult when I'm doing the single parenting to also podcast because there's so many people, so many meetings, so many, all of the things. And so, uh, so this is 
like such a peace of mind place for me. I enjoy this so much, the conversations with you guys, the back and forth, the, you know, the social media aspect. Um, but when balls start sliding, those are the balls that tend to slide first because they are, they, if I don't post on social media, um, it's not going to mean somebody misses a meal. But if I, <laughs> the other thing, if I'm posting on social media, I'm not doing something, something else that might need to be done uh, <laughs> with all of the kids in my house. So um, yeah, so that is kind of what's what's going on. My work is going great. It's uh, I'm only working when Nick is home because then we tag off. He goes to work during the day and I go to work during night. And school is going amazing um, for my girls. They're, they're enjoying it. Swimming lessons are happening, that sort of thing, which is really good. And um, I'm really just planning for Knit City coming up. It's, it's on the top of my mind, actually, in the last... Um, as it gets closer, I can't believe it's it's coming up in five days. It's I'll be on my way. So uh, one of my friends has graciously offered to look after my kids, and I will be going and driving down, and I'm going to be sharing a room with the lovely Laura, and she is from Alberta, and we're going to meet down there, and we're sharing a room together, and I can't wait to meet Stephen West. And there's going to be a meetup during the day, at one o'clock um, and it is going to be at the um, the booth where the knit girls are and it's there it's the booth for the yarn shop in Edmonton they have a booth in and Tracy's going to be working at the booth for part of it so um, all the podcasters are getting together around one o'clock uh, my class doesn't start till two so it turns out that I can go I wasn't sure if I'd be able to go or not but it starts at one o'clock. And so you can come by the booth and say hi to your favorite podcasters. They'll be coming in and out for the afternoon. So you can just check in there. Um, but of course, if you just see me around, come stop me, say hi, we'll chat, we'll knit. Um, I'll enable you to buy all of the things because that's what I like to do. And it's going to be a great time. Um, I know because of how I am when I'm meeting somebody that. I've seen on social media or or that sort of thing and I don't really know them it can be a little bit I get a little bit overwhelmed <laughs> I'll put it that way so I tend to stand back and just you know be in their vicinity and not actually talk to them <laughs> or I just go straight up beeline and say hi I'm Marsha <laughs> so um if if you would like to come over and talk to me, I'm totally open to that. Please don't feel that you can't um, or that you'd be bothering me in any, any way because that's absolutely just not a thing. Um, I can get a little bit overwhelmed when there's big crowds so I can um, get extra focused on what I'm looking at. It's not as bad as it used to be, but I can uh, like really focus on specific yarns or whatever. But if you come up and you like shoulder bump me and say, hey, how's it going? You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm good. It'll just pull me out and you're not interrupting me at all. And I would definitely love to meet all of you uh, in person. I think that's one of the excited, uh, exciting things about something like Knit City and Rhinebeck is that you get that opportunity to interact with, with the people that you get to see um, on a regular basis on YouTube and that sort of thing and your favorite designers and, and why not? why not go up to them and say hi and uh, introduce yourself and get a picture taken or, or whatever. Um, I know that all of the all of the podcasters that I know that are going to Knit City and to Rhinebeck are really approachable. Like they're just down to earth, you know, salt of the earth people that are just really genuine and, um, and kind. So, you know, if, if, you want to go meet somebody and if if you want to meet somebody and it's not me and you are interested in being introduced to those people then I can definitely introduce you if that makes it simpler for you as well uh, last year I was at Knit City and I was walking with um, Jenny from Lone Larch the Lone Larch podcast and she is fabulous she's one of my absolute favorite people she is hilarious and I enjoy my time with her so much 
and we were walking away from the Knit City uh, Forum, and in I think we were trying to find food or something, but we were by the hotel, and this car squealed up right beside us, and they're like, are you Jenny? And so it was awesome, and I was just like, I was so excited for her, because that was the first time somebody was like... <laughs> she had that experience and I got to take a picture of them together and it was beautiful and she was so cute. <laughs> Hi Jenny. <laughs> and I just, I can't wait for all of it. All of it. All of it. I'm so excited. I don't think you can tell, but maybe you can tell, but maybe not, but maybe you should, but I don't know. <laughs> oh my, my energy is so high today just thinking about it and just... Nobody ever tells you what the smell of a place is like. And I'm very sensory oriented. So when you walk into Knit City, I've gone to cities where nobody told me what it smelled like. And it was not a good experience, by the way. <laughs> when I was in Peru, it was... <laughs> anyway, so... Um, but Knit City, you walk in the doors and you can smell wool but you can smell vinegar and wool like that. The, um, because a lot of dyers use vinegar to set their, their dyes, right? So it's a combination of those smells and it's just, for me, it's euphoric. <laughs> I just love it so much. I know you love it too. That smell and the, the feeling of all of the people, everybody there is excited to be there. They are all there because they want to be. And going to a place that everybody is there because they all have something in common, they all love why they're there, they all want to be there, it's just, it's an amazing feeling just to be surrounded by that energy and it's just so positive. It's just, I just love that so much and it's almost, like it almost vibrates with, with positivity, if that makes sense. I don't know if I sound weird, but, <laughs> but it it's just, it's on a different, if it, it's on a different level, different vibration, I think. <laughs> Everyone's just so happy to be there. And, and you know, it's just, yes, there's lines and yes, people are holding their yarn in their arms, in the line, but they're chatting with everybody and they're excited to be there. And they, you know, they, some people have a shopping list and of ABC, this is what they're looking for. I don't have that. I have one booth that I have to stop at because I've contacted the dyer and said, please bring this and I will be there and I'll pick it up. Um, other than that, I'm just excited to go and to enable other people and to take my classes and to just be, be there and experience it. I'm going to be videoing um, and hopefully I'll get some interviews in, which would be amazing. Sometimes that doesn't happen because it's just not, it's not appropriate or it's just, um, a little bit awkward, that sort of thing. But hopefully I will be able to, to do that. Um, and there's usually some pretty, pretty big names in the Yarny world there, which is fabulous and always, always a good time. I just enjoy it so much. Um, so I feel like that's it for me. If you won a prize, please contact me and I will send it out to you. If you're interested in joining the mind, hashtag mindless knit along, then post your photos in the Ravelry thread. Ravelry link will be below. And um, also on social media, I use the hashtag mindless knit along and let's get some mindless knitting done. And thank you so much for joining me today. It has been a beautiful day and this has been a long episode, but you're okay with that. <laughs> I hope you have an amazing day and an amazing week and I will be seeing you over the weekend at Knit City, whether it is via my vlogs or via you being there. So have an amazing week. I hope you get a ton of knitting done um, and I'll see you soon. Until next time.
and it has been a little bit and why do I always start like that <gasps> which is super exciting for her. super excited oh goodness um uh which I'm very excited about I'm so excited it's and I'm really really excited about it um I can't I don't know if you can tell but I'm very excited about I have